Hi, I am the Curious Dr. Savage and welcome to my YouTube channel. So I have a PhD in counseling psychology. Um, I'm a licensed mental health counselor in private practice and I've been working in the mental health field for almost 15 years. So, <laughs> ugh, where and when did we learn that we had to suffer so much? You know, um, and I'm really grateful. So um, Oprah and her therapist actually put out a book like What Happened to You? Um, and I highly recommend it. I mean, it's pretty, um, it's pretty uh, tough reading at times, but I think, you know, just doing it in, you know, easy, manageable chunks and kind of digesting um, just because it's thick, you know, it's thick and it's, it's intense and, you know, you got to kind of get through it. But at any rate, I love that concept of like, oof, what happened to you? <laughs> Like, how did we get here? How did you arrive at a point where it just felt like the truth that you had to suffer so much? And, um, and they, you know, and there's different kinds of suffering, you know, like there's the suffering that happens when we're working towards something that's important to us or trying to achieve goals. And, and, you know, sometimes it feels like it's two sides of the same coin. Like if you have had experiences in your life that taught you that suffering was the truth or that, you know, maybe our tolerance or our threshold for, you know, essentially bullshit <laughs> for other people is pretty high, right? Then, um, you know, I think sometimes that uh, kind of fortifies us and allows us to also, you know, be pretty sturdy and pretty tough and be successful in other, in other areas. But I know for, you know, for me, obviously I can't speak for any, you know, everybody else, but I know for me in my life, you know, I look back at previous versions of myself and I'm just like, oof, like <laughs> where, where did that, where did that girl learn that, um, relationships had to be so painful all the time or that it was normal for stuff to, to feel so painful and, um, uh, you know, why, why wasn't I having this really strong reaction to just bolt in the presence of that? Um, and I, you know, and I'm going to kind of walk through what's happened for me. You know, obviously it's going to be different for, you know, other people's experiences, but to just to kind of show you how I go through the process of figuring, you know, of, of contemplating these things. So, um, I think for me, uh, like I grew up in a really, you know, small place. Like there's not very many people here. There's five generations of my family in this area. And, um, there tends to be really stereotypical gender roles and kind of this, um, attitude of, you know, you get married and that's it right? Like divorce is still pretty taboo. And, and so, I mean, I think part of it was that, like, there's just this expectation that, you know, um, relationships for, you know, whether they're good, bad, or ugly, like you just stay. And so, I mean, I think there was kind of this cultural and also familial expectation that like, um, there are aspects of your relationship that are just going to be fundamentally awful. And, um, that's, you're just, you're just stuck with that. Um, and so I think, you know, a lot of kind of my, path of growth or, you know, trying to change how I related to other people was also unlearning those things, right? Like unlearning that just like, no, that, that fundamentally doesn't make sense. And like, that's, that's not super healthy to have this attitude that like, that like we stay no matter what, as if the trade-off is better, right? That just, you know, having this like nominally or, you know, staying in a relationship just to say you didn't get divorced isn't better than, you know, tolerating all manner of ridiculousness. Um, and I think, you know, part of the other thing too, is if, you know, we've had any experiences in our background where, um, you know, any toxicity or any, um, you know, childhood traumas and things, uh, or, you know, just, um, you know, erratic, explosive, I mean, just bad behavior from other people, then it can also feel, start to feel really normal that just like, this is just life. Like, this is just the way life goes. There's a certain degree of toxicity and you just kind of have to work through that, right? Um, and again, I mean, I, I think that's a, that's a double-edged sword in the sense of like, um, it carries suffering with you in places that maybe it shouldn't go in terms of your relationships, in terms of, um, you know, not just romantic relationships, but also friendships. Like, w cause, cause that's it too, is, you know, sometimes we can get so stuck in like that friendships even mean suffering, or it means that like, um, you know, I, uh, just... I don't know, that just there's a degree of toxicity there that, that maybe shouldn't be. Um, 
But then, you know, like I said, the other side of that coin too is then you're kind of habituated to toxicity. So then, you know, when you are trying to do hard stuff like go to school or jobs or work on your career or, you know, pursue passions and things, and you're kind of habituated to the suffering that comes with that. So then you, you know, it kind of works for you in that instance too. So um, at any rate, I think that question of like where, at what point along the path did we learn that a dispropor disproportionate or just like an unreasonable amount of suffering in a relationship was just normal. And cause here's the other thing too, is like when we're in that and it just feels like it's normal, you can't really see it for what it is. It's not like you're, you know, it's not like you're in it and you're just like, oof, at what point did I learn that like relationships are supposed to be this ridiculous? It's more like you grow up in a system where they're like that. Um, and you, you know, and then you continue the pattern in your own relationship. So then it just feels like you're surrounded by this is the way, this is the way things have to go. And, um, so that's why part of the path forward is really disrupting these patterns and what senses, you know, what things are normal. And, um, I think, you know, part of it too, is kind of looking out toward, um, you know, people that we respect and admire, um, maybe relationships that, you know, are going better than ones that are had, like somehow we've got to be able to see out of the well we found ourselves in. Um, uh, yeah. And I, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and I know that this is kind of silly, but, um, for me, you know, sometimes I'll look to just like, you know, women that I really respect and admire, like authors or celebrities or something. And I'm just like, would X person tolerate the level of ridiculousness that I'm tolerating in my day-to-day -day life? right? Or would they leave? Like, would they bolt? Like, um, like, yeah. So, um, at any rate, yeah, I guess, um, I'm kind of enjoying just showing up and talking about whatever, whatever comes to mind at the time. Um, so if the content's helpful for you, then please like, and subscribe. Um, always open to, um, dropping comments and getting ideas about other things that I can talk about. And yeah, thanks for, thanks for checking out the video. Take care.